Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to be direct smelting some of these tailings behind me to try and figure out if there's any more gold left in them. Here's a quick look at what we got. This is uh, material from some quartz ore, gold ore, that's been through our turnkey system. And this is the tailings that came off the shaker table out of the number four port. And it's gone through our spiral classifier, so it's been dewatered and the coarse material, anywhere from uh, anything bigger than about 200 or 250 mesh, gets augered out, dewatered out of the spiral classifier, and ends up here in the oversized tailings bag. So what we're gonna do is I got some tailings here drying out in the sun. You don't wanna direct smelt anything that's, that's real wet. Um, so I'm gonna try and dry them out. We're gonna measure, we're gonna weigh them, and uh, we'll get a, a poundage for how much tailings we're gonna smelt. And then hopefully when we recover our gold at the end, we'll be able to figure out how much gold is left in these tailings. I did a video a little while back where we took these tailings and we reground them through the ball mill. Um, and as you can see, I've got this, you know, sacks and sacks of stuff and they're all, they're all different tailings. Um, but I, I reground them through a little ball mill we have and uh, recovered about an additional 15 grams per ton by fine grinding. All right guys, here's our little smelting setup. I've got a wrap of KO wool here. That's a number 40 crucible. I've got two little propane tanks. There's one here, another one there, and this hose going to a little shop back, vac for a blower. And uh, I'm gonna fill this up about halfway with the quartz tailings and some borax. I usually use anhydrous borax, but I can't find any, I can't buy any. The whole country's out, I guess. Um, so, uh, I'm going to fill it up about halfway. The borax I'm going to be using has, uh, some water in it. So I want to get the water boiled off. And then as it melts down into, um, a liquid, I'll, I'll add a little bit more of, of tailings and, and, uh, borax mixture so we can get this thing filled up pretty much three quarters of the way full. And then we'll pour it here into this big cone mold I made. And my strategy is, I'm not going to use any collector metal. I'm hoping there's enough uh, sulfides left in the ore that the sulfides are going to act as the collector. So we're going to make our, our slag really acidic. We're going to have the, the sulfides liquefy and trickle down through the material as it's melting. We'll have a matte phase on the bottom here once we pour it. And so when we pour this, we're going to have mostly slag, the quartz and borax floating on top as a liquid slag. And down here at the very tip of the cone, we're going to have a little, a little top of the pyramid that's going to be a mat. And that's, that's all the sulfides, um, that don't get absorbed in the slag. And hopefully those sulfides will carry all the gold and precious metals with them. And then once we get that out, then we'll have a little bit to deal with, not all the quartz and stuff that we started with. But once we get that out of the cone mold, then we can take it over to our little furnace and process it and recover our gold. All right, guys, so here's our borax. Um, and I am doing a mixture on this stuff that's two kilograms of tailings to 500 grams of borax. And my thought is, is that you can, you can always add more borax to thin it out but you can't take it out. And the more I add initially, the less volume of tailings I can fit into the crucible. So I'm gonna start with this um, this ratio and uh, I'm gonna you know, obviously keep track of how many kilograms of tailings I'm putting in there. And if the borax, if there's not enough borax to melt the quartz, because the quartz has a really, really high melting temperature, that's really the reason we're adding this borax. If I need more borax to thin it out, um, I can always add some when it's molten, but uh, I want to keep the volume of tailings in here as high as possible so we can smelt as much and get as much gold as we can. So I'm just going to take this stuff. Here's our two kilograms of tailings. And that comes out, I don't know, about a third. So I'm going to mix up um, another two kilograms of our recipe and then we'll start firing it. All right, guys, we have four kilograms of tailings in here and one kilogram of borax. So now let's get the furnace going. And we'll start melting the stuff down.
All right, guys, so we're just finishing up. It's on its final heat. Uh, I've been stirring in uh, little batches as we go. And um, I had to add a lot more borax than I thought I would. I ended up adding um, 10 kilograms of borax total and five kilograms of the tailings. And I tried one kilogram of soda ash, but it boiled and, and frothed too much. So I didn't use um, any more soda ash. But um, the, the borax decahydrate is about half water by weight. And so even though I added 10 kilograms of borax, about five of those, four or five of those was actually water weight that just boiled off. So if I was using anhydrous borax, I could use about one to one ratio of uh, tailings to anhydrous borax, and uh, that would be a pretty good um, ratio, maybe maybe uh, one to one and a quarter, a little more borax than tailings. But um, we'll get this thing heated up, finished heating up. I'll give it a couple more stirs, and then uh, we'll get this poured in the cone mold and see what we got. Put it back in, yeah. All right, we'll let that cool and see what we got in the bottom there. All right, guys, our stuff's cooled down here. So let me tip this cone mold over and we'll see what we got. All right, guys, we'll tip this over and hopefully we have our mat layer at the top of this cone here. Oh, need our hammer. Okay, we finally got it knocked out of there. Here's our slag, still kind of warm. Real glassy, acidic slag. Here's, there's no real defined cone, um, but here is our little bit of mat we got out of that five kilograms. So I'm going to poke around here a little bit more, see if I can find any little beads. I think there's a little bead right there. Um, but I'll see if I can find any more. But hopefully, that's where all our gold is. All right, guys, so here's our mat. And I got a couple little beads that I found suspended kind of right over where this thing was. Um, so they tried to come down and coalesce. They just couldn't quite make it all to the bottom. Um, so let me put these in here, 
and uh, we'll try and get a weight on them. Okay, so all those matte BBs weigh just under four grams. So we ran five kilograms and ended up with four grams of matte. All right, guys, it's been about 12 hours since we pulled the mat out of the slag there. So this is the next morning. And this is pretty common what happens to uh, the mat phase. If you just leave it out in the air, it just kind of turns to powder. Um, and I don't know if that's a reaction with, you know, the moisture in the air or the oxygen in the air. Um, but I was thinking, you know, I'd have to come in and crush this up and get it, get it, uh, ready for our next melt, but it's pretty much already oxidized now. So I don't have a whole lot more to do. Um, so let me get, uh, let me get this kind of figured out what we got and maybe crush it up a little bit. Some of those bigger chunks in there. And then, uh, we'll smelt this stuff down and hopefully get our little gold bead. All right, guys, so we got our slag here. I'm going to mix up some flux and I'm going to talk you through that. Um, but I'm also going to take this opportunity to explain a little bit more of my strategy with, uh, smelting the tailings all together and not adding any collector metal. Um, so what I'm really trying to do is recreate what they do in copper smelting, which is where they make their flux uh, really acidic. And by making their flux really acidic, they take all that copper rich mat and it goes to the bottom of the cone mold or the pot or whatever, and then they process that. But that copper mat collects all the precious metals, all the lead, all the gold and silver, copper, tellurium, everything. goes down in that mat, and they can reprocess that later. My hope was that I could use the same idea and get some, uh, some mat from our tailings that would act as a collector for our gold and precious metals. The surprising thing was is we only got about four grams of of mat um, out of five kilograms of stuff. So it's like, you know, less than one one thousandth of the volume. So I don't have a real high hope that we got all the gold out of this stuff. Um, but if if the mat did a good job of collecting the precious metals and the gold and, and all the stuff, uh, then hopefully we'll have um, somewhere a little less than a gram of gold from our mat here. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up 150 grams of soda ash. Unlike our first uh, smelt, we're going to make this stuff really basic. And by making it basic and adding some iron in the form of nails, we're going to reduce any of the base metals in here that are less reactive than iron. The metallic metal is going to go down to the bottom. And the iron sulfide that we make is going to be absorbed in the basic slag. Now, if you have... Uh, lead sulfide or copper sulfide, it doesn't get absorbed in the slag. But if we can convert it all to iron sulfide, we'll get it absorbed in our slag. And then we'll end up having our uh, little prill of metal, mostly, hopefully, mostly precious metals. And then we'll cupel it to remove any remaining base metals and we can weigh our gold and silver bead. So what I'm going to do is I've got 150 grams of soda ash here. And I'm also going to add about 30 grams of uh, silica sand. And because I'm using these fire clay crucibles, I add a little bit of silica sand in with the soda ash. Uh, it helps preserve the crucible a little bit better so I can get more firings out of it. Um, so I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to add our mat into it from our first smelt. I'll get it capped with the lid here. And you just want to get it all mixed up as best you can. Now I'm going to pour that right into our crucible. It comes up, I don't know, about a third of the way here. Then I'm going to add some nails. I'm going to put the nail head down so we get as much surface area interacting with the, the mat as possible. And the mat is more dense, so it's going to go to the bottom once it melts. And so we'll get those down on the bottom. I'll pull these nails out just before the pour, and then we will pour it in our cone mold and hopefully get a little gold bead down at the bottom. So on a previous video, I, I crushed the tailings really, really fine and got uh, about 
0.4 grams out of 25 kilograms or so, 20, 25 kilograms. This one, uh, because we only ran about five kilograms, if we have the same recovery rate, we should get about 0.1 grams. I think I misspoke earlier. We should get about 0.1 grams of gold out of this, not one gram. And so typically how this would work if you're gonna do uh, an assay of the tailings is most assayers use about 30 grams of material. They collect all the gold they can out of those 30 grams using lead as a collector metal, and then they can compel the lead away. And what happens is they, they end up, they use about 30 grams of tailings and they end up with about a 30 gram button of lead. Now, if you wanted to do uh, a, essentially a large assay, just like we did with our tailings, you'd end up with, you know, a, a one, two, three kilogram block of lead uh, because you, need, you would need so much lead to rain down through all that material. And then you end up cupelling away a three kilogram block to get a 0.1 kilogram or a 0.1 gram gold button. So it's just, it's just not very feasible. It doesn't work very well. And so that's why I was hoping to use the mat in, in the, the tailings to use as a collector of gold. The surprising thing to me was, is there wasn't much mat there. I was expecting, you know, somewhere in the hundreds of grams of mat. We ended up with, I think, four grams or so. Um, and so what that tells me is a lot of the sulfides were probably oxidized once they were ground up and exposed to water and air for a long time. Those things have been sitting there for over a year. So probably a lot of the sulfides have oxidized out of our ore and all those oxides were just absorbed into the slag. That slag, that acidic slag, is a really good absorber of oxides. And so we didn't have hardly any collector metal or any collector mat to uh, come down through and gather our precious metals. So we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully there is enough to collect the gold and hopefully there's enough gold to collect down at the bottom. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But this is, this is kind of uh, uh, the poor man's assay or we're taking some shortcuts here in, uh, in trying to collect our gold all down to the bottom with such a big amount of material. All right, guys, here's our cone mold cooling down. I just have a little bucket of water. I set it in to cool down the, the slag. Um, and I had forgotten, and I'll, I'll warn everybody, that I added way too much soda ash to this. Uh, I had like four grams or something of mat, and I added, I think, 150 grams of soda ash, if I remember right. And uh, so basically, we were just melting down a bunch of soda ash, and the problem is, is when you have, you don't have any sulfides for it to react with um, and, and kind of buffer it. You just, you have this huge column of soda ash in the crucible, um, like in this one. You know, you'd have the crucible that full. And as the soda ash melts, it releases a huge amount of CO2. And so it just foams up and foams over and, and makes a huge mess. And um, 
I caught it before it foamed over the crucible. Um, but what I did was I, I started adding borax to it to help thin it out and uh, kind of cool it down. So my, my slag here is a little bit more acidic than um, I originally had intended. But hopefully we got the sulfides eaten up and it's still basic enough that the sulfides have been absorbed into the slag. And we have a little precious metal prill at the bottom here. But um, it's about cooled down. I'll get it uh, knocked out of there on the table and we'll take a look. Here's our stuff. Now hopefully our little prills right down here at the top of the pyramid. Let's see. I'm gonna put it in a little bin so it doesn't go shooting all over the place. So there's the point I kind of knocked off. Let me, I got to dig around down here and see if I can find that little prill. All right, so I dug around, I found it. There's a little tiny bead right there. And that was down in the, in the tip. So let's get that pulled out and get it weighed. All right, so here's our little bead. We're figuring there's about 0.1 grams of gold based on another test. And this one is 0.109. So a little bit over a gram or 0.1 grams. And there might be some base metals in here. So I'm gonna cupel this and see if we can get it refined a little bit more. And, uh, and we'll get it weighed again. All right, guys, so I'm just going to talk you through this real quick. Um, this is a cupel, and it is porous to metallic oxides, but not to metals. And so to refine our gold, we're going to heat that thing up to about 1,850 degrees. I'm going to add a little bit of bismuth metal here to it. The bismuth is going to melt, absorb this precious metal bead with the base metals in it. The bismuth is then going to start oxidizing in the oxygen in the furnace. And those bismuth oxides are molten at about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. And so they start to run off the bead and are absorbed by this cupel. Whereas the metal just sits there and just keeps shedding, shedding, shedding the oxides until the bismuth is completely oxide, oxidized. It's taken with it all of the base metals in that little prill there and uh, you're left with just the gold and the silver, which cannot oxidize um, and won't, won't get absorbed into the cupel. So um, I'm gonna set the furnace up. I'll get this melted down. I've got a ton of other videos uh, on how to do this process and showing it in depth, so you can check those out. Um, but I'll just, I'm just gonna put this in the furnace and then yank it out uh, when it's done, and we can take a look at the bead. Okay, guys, here's our cupel. It's cooled down some, but it's still pretty hot. Uh, so there's our little precious metal bead. It looks, if I remember right, it, it looks a little more gold than the one we put in. Um, so I, I think we reduced uh, or, or removed some of the base metals. And the you can kind of see there's the, the original color and then it's kind of gray or oh, yellow. Uh, those are where the oxides have been absor absorbed, all the bismuth oxides. Um, and our little prill is left over. And what you'll notice, you may see, be able to see it. There's a little tiny darker ring right around the, the prill. And that's where typically, uh, copper or nickel is the very last thing to oxidize in it. And it leaves a little tiny black ring around the prill. Um, but that is what we got. So let me get some tweezers and I'll pull it out of there and we'll get it weighed. I think the, the one we just did was, uh, 0.109 or something. Um, so let's see how much this one weighs. We're again, we're shooting for that 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.09, 0 0.1 grams is what we should get out of uh, out of that five kilograms we started with. And our scale is zeroed, and that is point. Oh, nine, three. 
So 0.093 grams in 5 kilograms. Let me do some math here. Okay, so 0.093, depending on which way the wind's blowing here, um, in 5 kilograms is equivalent to about 18.5 grams per metric ton. And uh, we're comparing apples and oranges a little bit, but in my last sample, I did uh, 50 pounds and ended up with 15.5 grams in a short ton. So, so those square pretty good. And so what that tells me is by grinding finer, I liberated almost all of the remaining gold left in that stuff. I think I ground, I didn't actually get a uh, screen test on it, but I, I think I ground uh, to about 150 or 200 mesh. And that released, whoa, that released all, pretty much all the remaining gold in that stuff, and we were able to gravity recover it. So that that's pretty cool. Um, just by fine grinding, our gravity circuit was getting, you know, probably 90% plus of the gold out of this particular ore. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks again, and we'll see you on the next video.